Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at an RS-45 data link for remote control applications. And I'm using this little interface board. This is UART to RS-45. So the output is twisted pair, and it's a differential balanced line. So at the other end of this line, I have a USB to RS-45. So the distance between this, this connector and this line here could be up to 4,000 feet, or just over one kilometer, because it's a differential balanced line and has a high noise immunity. So normally when we want to run remote control, we could use LoRa radio modules and go wireless. But sometimes we can't, like if you want to control an ROV, a remote operated vehicle like this one here. Now this is operated underwater, and if we want to go down 150 feet, we need a 150 foot tethered line with an RS-45 twisted pair cable inside for control, for controlling the forward, reverse, and descent thrusters. We are going to have a look at this little interface board which is connected to our serial port of our microcontroller, the TTL UART. Now if you look at the very top connector, you can see we have a ground, an RX, TX, and VCC. Now VCC can be either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Then we have our serial port, our TX, RX, and ground. Now the output of this little interface board is labeled A plus, B minus. Now this output is RS485. Now RS-485 is a serial communication standard. An output is a twisted pair. It's half duplex. Now this twisted pair is a differential balanced line. Now because it's a differential balanced line, it has a very high noise immunity. So we could hook up another RS-485 device on this twisted pair one kilometer away. As opposed to RS-232, where the effective range is only 15 meters or 50 feet. Now we could run this to another device one kilometer away for long range communication. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my setup. So my SCAM3 board is feeding power, 3.3 volts, to the interface board. And the UART RXTX on the SCAM3 board is fed into the TX and RX of the interface board. And the output of the interface board, the RS45, is connected to the twisted pair, and that's run into the USB to RS45 converter. Now normally we gain access to the fourth operating system through the USB port on the SCAN3 board, but now we're going to redirect that to the UART1. So now we can gain access using the USB, the RS45 converter, and the twisted pair. Now we can gain access to the fourth operating system on a SCAN3 board on a very long distance RS45 line. Okay, here's a little demo on how we could send simple command codes down the RS-45 twisted pair into the SCAM3 board. So I have it mapped to my keyboard. So if I want to control my ROV, my underwater ROV, 8 would be forward, 2 would be reverse, 4 would be left, 6 would be right, 9 would be ascend, and 3 would be descend. So I have it mapped to the LEDs on the SCAM3 board. So if I hit 1, I'll get 1 LED, 2, 2, two LEDs, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero is all off. So I could go forward, and I could go reverse. So these are my commands, left, right, up, down, or I could go forward, stop, reverse, stop. So there's just a little demo how we could send command codes to control our ROV by simply using fourth over the USB port. Okay, here's a code running on the SCAN3 board, and it's written in flash forth. So our main program is called ROV. Now this is just a demo program. We're not actually controlling the ROV. I'm just showing you how this works. So basically it's a big case statement. And so we're on a keyboard. We could press keys from 0 to 9. And we'll get an ASCII output of ASCII 48 to ASCII 57. So when we press the key number 8, we'll get an ASCII 50, 56. And it's going to run It's going to run this code here. It's going to turn on 8 LEDs on the SCAM3 board. So that's our forward key. So instead of running eight bars, we could put our own code in here to make our forward thrusters come on to, to, to drive our ROV forward. If we press key nine, we're gonna get nine bars. It's gonna run this code, nine bars. But instead of running nine bars, we could put our own code in here to make our ascent thrusters come on to make the ROV go up. So we can map any key on the keyboard. We just add that to our case statement, if you want. We're just using zero to nine. And when we hit the escape key, it's going to actually come out of this, out of this program, and we'll get an OK prompt. Okay, here's the redirection code. 
So when we run RS-45, we're going to gain access to the fourth operating system on a SCAN3 board through the RS-45 twisted pair. So from the USB to RS-45 converter through the twisted pair through the interface board and then into UART1, that's going to be our, our uh, control when we run RS-45. Now when we run USB, it's going, to it's going to revert back to the USB port on the SCAMP3 board. Now the next bit of code is the case statement because we don't have actually case running on FlashForth. So to run our case, here's our code for our uh, case. And then we have our ROV. So that's the code there. You can run on the SCAMP3 board. Then you could, you could run code over a long distance over RS-45 line. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my SCAN3 board through the RS-45 twisted pair, through the interface board, and into UART1 running at 9600 baud. So now I can control my SCAN3 board through a very long line. I could be up to one kilometer away. And right now, if I hit enter on my keyboard, you see I get OK prompt, so everything works normally. If I type words, there's all the words. If you look at the bottom, you can see the words USB, RS-45, there's bars. So everything works normally. Now remember the RS-45 is half duplex and the interface board actually switches. It knows when there's transmitter data, it will go in transmit mode and then it will switch back to receive mode. So it takes time. So you have to be careful if you want to run code, if you want to program code, if you want to uh, upload code into the SCAN3 board, we have to set up some, some delays so if we go into the serial port, you see here the transmit delay, I got 50 milliseconds per character and 100 milliseconds per line. So we need those delays because we're running half duplex and we have to give it time to switch. So if you want to upload code, make sure you set it those uh, transmit delays and then everything should work okay. So now we have total control over a scan3 board over a very long uh, line RS-45. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to gain access to the SCAN3 board over the RS-485 line using this little interface board. So if you have a project and you want to get data over a long distance and you have a twisted pair cable, then you can consider using RS-485.